All right, so we are back with another long range ballistics gel test. So these long range ballistics gel tests are actually becoming one of my favorite videos to do for a couple of reasons, mainly because I'm learning a ton about how bullets perform at these different distances and why certain types of bullets may be better for certain applications at certain distances. And we're finding evidence of all these things and different effects of bullets shooting them at different distances. Um, and we're finding evidence of all this and I'm able to share it with you guys. So not only am I able to learn, but you guys are able to learn from this as well. So that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So um, what we're testing today though is something that you got, this is your guys' request. So the last time we tested this is the 115 grain DTAC the, with the tub nose ring. So if you guys are, are uh, curious about the significance of the tub nose ring, um, we have a full video of the last 115 grain DTAC. It is a DTAC test. It is a six millimeter Creedmoor test at 800 yards. And we tested these 115 DTACs with the nose ring. Um, and the main, if you guys have any questions about the nose ring, go back and reference that video because it has a full workup on the nose ring in David Tubbs' own words. So, but the, the long and short of it is the fact that this nose ring is supposed to allow the bullet to collapse in on itself at the nose and act more like a match or act make a match bullet act more like a hunting bullet on game or in ballistics gel so that's something i've been wanting to test and we actually did see evidence of that in our 800 yard test but we because we didn't capture a bullet we weren't able to absolutely prove it with with any sort of de or with any sort of definite or what we're not actually able to give any sort of definite proof so I was determined to capture one of these. Now, I, in that last video, I said, um, I'm, since these bullets came from one of my viewers, one of you guys sent these bullets to me, and I wanted you guys to be involved in this, um, I let you guys pick. Would you guys rather have seen this test at 420 yards with the 6mm arc, or bring it into 800 yards with the 6mm Creedmoor, and test to see if we could capture one of these? And you guys overwhelmingly chose the 6 arc. So that's what we're doing today. 420 yard long range ballistics gel test with the 115 DTAC. Uh, with the tub nose ring. So. Oh yeah. Alright, that was jelly. Right at, that was right at my velocity. So that was seven feet per second under the regular velocity that we've been getting. And I do believe I did not see an exit. There you go for velocity's sake. Let's see that. 2593. That will go down range and uh, see if we captured one of these. If we didn't capture one of these, I have a plan. going down there and seeing both of them veer out of the gel, I just want to capture one of these. So we are at a hundred yards. Now, Let's see if we caught one. We definitely dropped some energy on it. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So, the first two shots that we took that uh, impacted our ballistic gel from 420 yards, one of them here really close to the edge, the other one right here really close to the edge, uh, both of them traveled a good ways inside the gel. This one and both of them made it to about the same point uh, when they really started to really expand. So at 420 yards, I'm not seeing a whole lot of energy transfer or anything like that but at a hundred yards i wanted to catch one of these bullets i wanted to see how it performed 
and there is absolutely no denying that wound cavity. That is a six millimeter at 100 yards from an AR platform, and just look at that wound cavity. And then beyond that, we did get a full capture. Um, a lot of the bullet looks like it had fragmented out, but then the largest portion of it looks like the core. So from our evidence here, we are seeing that, that these bullets are acting as they're supposed to. That is nothing more than the boat tail of the bullet. The rest of that bullet exploded on impact uh, once it made it about six inches into the block, which is just absolutely perfect. So we'll get this back to the bench. We'll talk about it. We'll look at it, but uh, I think it's safe to say there's something to this nose ring. All right, so there you have it. So first off, we'll talk about the 420 yard shot. So first off, actually, I actually did two. Uh, I actually had two impacts. The, you guys only saw the second one because I didn't think it was pertinent to even show you the first one. My cold bore shot actually uh, was just right here into the edge of the gel, traveled in about 10 inches and then veered out of the block. Didn't see any evidence of expansion, um, really no evidence of tumbling either. Um, and then my second shot, which you guys saw there, the 420 yard shot, uh, was about a half inch in on the edge of the block and traveled all the way through the first block and was really completely unimpressive. We saw no evidence of expansion. It looks like it may have started to tumble here towards the edge of the block or towards the last few inches of this 16 inch block so nowhere in the range where we're gonna where we're gonna be wanting to see damage on any sort of game um, and then traveled about three inches into the second block and veered off um, I was going to actually try to test another take another shot at that 420 yards once I saw that this performance but I figured with having two of them in the gel consistent performance it was probably going to be a waste of time so with that being said at 420 yards um, it was a 2.4 mil elevation to get on target uh, at our 2,593 feet per second as you guys saw uh, at the end of that which are the this load uh, was averaging right around 2,600 feet per second so that was really consistent with what I've been getting um, so that at at 420 yards this thing had 2047 feet per second velocity remaining as well as 1070.3 foot pounds of energy that it could have dumped into this target had it performed like we wanted it to now like i said this each bullet has a different bullets perform in different ways now as you guys saw when we tested the last 420 yard long range ballistic gel test with the six arc and the uh the 109 burger that 109 burger being a match bullet still performed outstanding it it had expansion or explosion characteristics like burger bullets do and it did exactly what it, it was an absolutely stellar performance at 420 yards through a standard small gas gun so I was really happy with that and I was hoping to see something like that with these 115 DTACs but I'm not surprised uh, that it didn't now obviously we didn't see any sort of tumbling either at these lower at these at this 420 yard shot um, and I think reason being is because the bullet comes in pretty straight on now if you guys remember this the that 2047 feet per second and that 1070.3 foot pounds of energy is almost identical to the energy and velocity from this same bullet same setup in the six Creedmoor at 800 yards so why did we see tumbling at that 800 yards but no tumbling um, or expansion now, i think that tumbling caused a lot of the expansion at that 800 yards um, why did we not see that at this distance i have a theory and this is something i've actually been testing um, and i think that it's i'm seeing more and more evidence of this and i think that has to do with the trajectory so as you notice here at this six at this 420 yards we're only dialing up 2.4 mils the bullet has almost no arch to it and it's almost a straight in shot into that gel whereas at that 800 yards we're dialing up over four mils double the trajectory a big arch which i think just like as if you see people skipping bullets off the water i used to do trick shots where i would skip bullets off the water and pop balloons and things like that and if you come in at the right trajectory, a bullet will skip. Well, when it hits the water and skips, it tumbles. Well, ballistic medium, humans, animals, made up of a, a lot of water, a lot of hydrostatic shock. So I think 
my personal theory is we're seeing that is what we're seeing here is with those larger trajectories that's why these match bullets are tumbling consistently because of those larger trajectories and that's why some of these hunting bullets that we've been seeing haven't been expanding because they're not active they're not hitting and getting that straight push to expand like they're supposed to so now now i did want to i said that i was going to capture one of these and we did so to do that i took it into 100 yards so before we packed up for the day i went into 100 yards and put plugged the middle of the gel with one of these to attempt to capture one and we absolutely did and we saw the performance that is claimed uh with the tub nose ring we saw expansion actually i would say it was more of an explosion uh the the tip seemed to have collapsed in on itself and caused the entire front half of the bullet to completely disintegrate causing this absolutely incredible wound cavity 3.3 inches wide wound cavity um, and as you saw that huge temporary cavity and all that and all that energy dump it dumped all of its energy within the first 14 inches of this block starting at around six inches and the max point so the widest point was at around the 10 and a half inch mark so at that 10 and a half inch mark it is 3.3 inches wide now obviously this is at 100 yards but this is performance that you would see from a hunting bullet a burger hunting bullet performs just like this did um the front half of the bullet if you look really closely into this wound cavity from the 100 yard shot you will see it's really kind of hard to tell but there are little pieces of this jacket just all through this one large section of the wound cavity so that bullet went in did not tumble got to this point the tip started to collapse in on itself just like it was supposed to and it completely disintegrated the front half of that bullet causing this massive wound cavity and this massive transfer of energy now weight retention uh this bullet weight retention wise did not like i said i didn't expect i was kind of curious how we were going how that was going to work i did not expect this bullet to retain a ton of its weight and it didn't we got 44 grains uh, of weight retention which is basically just the half of the bearing the back half of the bearing surface and the ogive with the entire front of the bullet like i said completely exploding causing that massive wound cavity now why did it not do that at 100 at, at 420 yards there just was not enough velocity and energy to cause that tip to expand and explode in on itself so at 100 yards we had now obviously this rifle is zeroed at 100 yards so zero i was zeroed out at 100 yards and 2456.4 feet per second velocity remaining at 100 yards so that is 400 feet per second more than at 420 yards so all that extra energy all that extra velocity allowed that bullet to expand and do what we wanted it to do so at 100 yards this would be a phenomenal hunting bullet so the energy that it transferred was 1540.7 foot pounds of energy at that 100 yards so huge energy dump lots of velocity did exactly what we wanted it to do we only got a 44 grain 44 grains of retention but like i said i wasn't expecting to see a whole lot of retention with this i was what i was hoping to see was exactly what we saw getting proof that with with the tub nose ring with the one with any bullet now actually i don't know that's with any bullet but that is going to be one of the next things that we test here soon i have uh my viewer was also kind enough to send me a couple of other bullets with the nose ring to test so we're going to test this and see if we get the same performance out of other bullets so i do plan to do more long range testing with these 115 d tacks so be on the lookout for that but uh i think it was pretty impressive to see that this bullet did perform as it was as advertised like a hunting bullet while also getting all the benefits uh, of the match bullet and the nose ring with the uniform ballistic coefficient so really awesome to see this um, i hope you guys enjoyed it like i said learning a lot learning about the trajectory and the trajectory and the, and the fact that it's causing tumbling or at least in my opinion it is um, like i said i find all this fascinating i hope you guys do as well i hope you guys enjoyed this i'll see you next time i'm out Thank you.